While you guys were home playing house, not watching graveyard cars, I was earning the gold key to the crapper. <laughs> Christine, gold key to the crapper. Here's what all y'all missed. <laughs> Coming back on the air. Last time on Graveyard Cars. So today's the big day, the big reveal of our 1970 Roadrunner. We have really pushed through this car. What can a guy say about that? Holy <laughs> crap. That is just pure art. Not sure exactly why, but anything to uh, disrupt my day, he'll jump in the middle of to make sure it happens. Graveyard Dreams, part of Graveyard Cars, is alive and well. This station will remain on the air on this episode. It's nice, like with Doug and Alyssa and the rest of the team now, they know how I teach, they heed those teachings, and they make a better finished product. That, to me, is one of the most satisfying feelings in the world. That copy get you, Bob. In Springfield, Oregon, dead Mopar muscle cars are coming back to life. Restored by Mopar master Mark Warman. I'm a liar and a fat mouth. His daughter, Alyssa Rose. <laughs> Why would you do that? His painter, Will Scott. Got one dog. And his cousin, Dougie. Oh, hi, Mark. Welcome back to Graveyard Cars. I thought this might be a really good opportunity to show Alyssa the differences that make a Trans Am Challenger a Trans Am Challenger over, say, the RTs that we've worked on or the base models that we've worked on. These are a very unique car. There are a lot of things that came on them from the factory that no other car had during that time period or before it. Take a look at the side shot of this 1970 Dodge Challenger Trans Am, one of how many built? 2,400. How many with automatic transmission? 1,411. See how much better that works, folks? This, yeah, you have the answers right there. Yeah, Stupid. but you need the answers right there. Fliz and Flasm has them up here. Okay, so what's the difference? What jumps out at you is different on this car than any of the other Obviously the TA stripe. The, the Trans Am stripe, okay. So it's a longitudinal stripe. It goes from the fender all the way back to the quarter panel. Yep. Ends just behind the quarter glass. Okay. Now there's something else down here. The exhaust. Yeah, that's right. That's right, if you know those cool, answers, though. just shoot them right out there. That's called a megaphone exhaust system because it kind of looks like a megaphone. The exhaust pipe comes down off of the manifold, goes into the resonator, loops back around, oh. comes out the front of the resonator, loops again, and comes out to be a megaphone exhaust. <laughs> That's a nice set of glasses. <laughs> that looks stupid. If it ha this is more about learning, right? Yeah. There are so many unique things about this car that I wanted to take an opportunity to walk around with Alyssa, our QC person, and get her acclimated with just how cool these cars are, maybe help grow her appreciation for these really cool uh, package cars, just how much thought went into it and what their motivation was behind it. So if you look at this hood, this hood is unique to the Challenger Trans Am. It's made of fiberglass. It has hood pins, mandatory. These are part of the Trans Am Challenger package. You get the hood tie down pins. What you'll notice different about this, because you've actually done these before. Yep, on our cooters. Normally a Phillips screw holds those in place, right? Yeah. Four Phillips screws. Well, in this case, it's a rivet because you're going into fiberglass. Oh. A screw would go into the fiberglass and just rip right back out. A rivet will hold it in there. So go ahead and write that down. I think that my dad has forced me to use a whiteboard because the last time I used my notepad. I didn't actually write anything down. So we got the fiberglass hood, hood pins held in with rivets, windshield washer nozzle on hood. Very good, very good. All anything right. else? Let's just walk around the rest of the car since we're standing here. You can leave the board, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Jens is okay. All right, you all right. All what's those, this huh? little critter back here called? That's called a spoiler. Yeah, it's called what kind? A go wing or a duck bill? A duck bill. Very good. And this should be on the fender tag, obviously. Okay. What code is that? A nice F. 17? F-17, like the fighter jet, absolutely. They decided to go with J-82 on this It's a shame, though. Yeah. So the walk around is a little rough. I mean, as you guys all know, my dad's a little bit crazy. I mean, I'll get some information out of him, and then he's right back to, like, a movie quote or something. So it is what it is. I just try to have fun when I work with my dad at this point. Now, look at the front of the car. Is there anything on the front of that car that you see? The lower. Uh, lights. Parking lights? These are road lamps off of a 1970 Cuda. Standard on a 70 Cuda, optional on a 71, never available on a Challenger. So. Okay, I just want to see something. On that car Waiting back there. For the mothership. 
Okay. I am able to learn even when my dad is like messing around and stuff. Um, it's just probably not as much as I would learn like with working with someone like Ron from Magnum Force, who's a little bit more like meat and potatoes. That's how I am. I'm very like, I want to get straight to the point. I don't really want to mess around. I want to get my job done and then like get out. And my dad's just very much the opposite. But I still do learn some stuff. It's just very stressful and then it takes a lot longer than it needs to. This has the lower chin spoilers which also was on all Challenger TAs. Where'd you go? What? All right. Is this factory on all Trans Am yes. Challengers? And what do they call that? Uh, Duckbill spoiler. Very good. So write down Duckbill spoiler and the sales code for it. Of course. J. 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 That's Wait, right. Which? J. 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 That's C. H. Uh huh. K. Eighty. Eighty. Two. 82, okay, <laughs> good. Just get there. I think I'm just allergic to bad comedy. If you were gonna start sneezing because of bad comedy, you'd have to hear the bad comedy, so I don't know where she got that from. Or it could be the pistachios, I'm not sure. And second off, did she just find out she's allergic to pistachios, right? Because if you knew that, maybe don't eat the pistachios. Okay, let's work our way around to the front then. And what did we notice on the front? It has road lamps. Which are not correct on a Challenger. They were standard on a 70 Cuda model. Optional on a 71. What Cuda. about these black flap things? Chin spoilers. We talked about those a few minutes ago. No, oh, I wasn't. They were optional, here. but not standard equipment on the Trans Am Challenger. Okay, how'd you do? Good. Got it written down? Okay. Yeah. I'm hungry. You know what happens when I get hungry? I lose my attention. I start rattling off movie quotes. Become normal? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we'll pick it up after lunch. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is open the hood and talk about the things underneath there that make it a unique Trans Am Challenger. So I'm about ready to work on the 69 and a half Super B, um, putting the sound deadener in. It's from Second Skin. We've got to put the sound deadener in before we can put the carpet or anything in like that. And a lot of the customers will opt to put that in their car. It just helps with road noise and things like that. So it's really nice to actually be able to put in the car. The product Justin puts on the floors of these cars just helps reduce the amount of road noise that you're going to have. And when you're driving one of these cars, it's a 50-year-old car, 50-year-old technology, you've got rattles. Even if we restore them, you're still going to have some rattles, some noises. It's a tinnier car compared to today's stuff. So that product, when applied properly to the floor, to the lower deck of the firewall, to the underside of the dash, to the inside underneath the floor mat area of the trunk, these key areas, it quiets the ride and makes it a better experience for the driver. The process of this goes really easy. It comes out in these pre-cut squares. And I have a screwdriver with me, use the end of it, kind of get in the cracks and crevices. And then they actually send us a roller, which helps out really nice, you know, so you don't cut your hands up because the backing of it is, it's a really thin metal. But use the roller, use the screwdriver, you can get it to lay down really nice and flat. We're putting it in there because it's today's technology that they didn't have back in the day. Now, we put it in areas of the car that you cannot see once the carpet and the trunk mat are in there. We don't put it on the sides of the quarters where you'll see it, because I think that would look terrible for an OE car. But the people that we're doing these cars for have requested it. It holds down the heat, it holds down the, the sound. It makes a much better driving car experience to have that product inside there. So it's not because I don't know that it's not supposed to be on there. I know it's not supposed to be on there. But if you have the technology available, why not use it? So I just finished uh, putting the second skin in the 69 Super B. It went really smooth. Everything worked out perfect. I was able to get all the surfaces that I need covered. And uh, this thing's ready to get the carpet and the dash put in. Okay, what I'm working on today is pressing some axle bearings off some axle shafts for an eight and three quarter rear end. And uh, in the past, we didn't have a press big enough to put our axles in place. So we just took a cutting wheel and we cut the bearings right off the axles. Today we have a nice big press and uh, it's big enough we can put the axles in it and push the axles right out of the bearings with all the tools. These are pressed on very solid and there's actually a retainer that goes on behind the bearing to keep the axle inside your car so you're axles and wheels don't come off while you're going down the road. It takes a pretty good press to be able to push hard enough to push the bearings off the axle shaft. It's, it's, there's a little bit of 
a danger involved in this. Some of these bearings could break or anything like that. So you do want to wear safety glasses and uh, proper safety gear. You just got to be really careful when you're working with heavy duty tools like these. We got all the bearings pushed off the axles and uh, this nice new 55 ton press was a breeze. All right, just got through working out and having lunch. Actually, I had lunch first, and then it worked out. We are ready to do, oh, nice, another change of sunglasses, yeah, huh? Yeah, because the other yeah, ones I liked were. It. Chips, 1978, Eric Estrada, I like those glasses, yeah. Are we gonna go over oh, these cars or Oh, you what? know who else had those psycho glasses? Those are psycho glasses. The bad guy in Dirty Harry 2. Oh, you know, besides Magnum Force and Chips, uh, the cop in uh, Psycho, the other one, who else had those crazy glasses? Oh, the, the T-1000, yeah, T-2, yeah, he had him. I honestly don't really watch movies. I don't, and I have no memory. Like, I don't remember anything past today. So, he, I don't know what he's talking about all the time. He's, he's quoting movies off, and I never know what they're from. I just kind of pretend like I know what's going on, but I don't. That's bad, don't you guys can use that. The only thing left now is under the hood. I want to show her the 340 special Trans Am block and induction system, which is a, Six pack, and uh, you got your board. Yeah, I got my board. Can you grab that, please? Yeah. Yeah, I just feel better. Feel more comfortable knowing. What the numbers? Yeah, uh, not for me. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. There we go. All righty. All right. Three forty six pack, huh? Yeah. Six what it says. Pack. Yeah, that's what it says. All right, you ready to do this? Yep. Thing? Let's do it. Now you've blown out my eardrums. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. Fiberglass hood should lift up fairly easy, right? It's a fully functional open hood that allows cold air to get into the air cleaner. The same principle that you see in a shaker hood challenger or a shaker hood CUDA. It's allowing outside air not manipulated or, or compromised by the engine compartment, but nice cool fresh air to come in. And, and cool air combusts better. Oh, those springs aren't bad. I mean, so <coughs> old, what is it? Oh, this is great, okay. So Trans Am Challengers and AAR Cudas, because of the fiberglass hood, have a lightweight, smaller diameter hood spring. Somebody used what appear to be maybe springs from a washing machine. <laughs> and then these big D-rings to extend it out to the hinge. Okay, so this is what they're not supposed to look like. Let's go okay. take a look over there. Now open that one up. And this is what they're supposed to look like. See how much smaller this is than a standard one? Yeah. Doesn't have but it actually goes from point to point. It mm -hmm. doesn't have a D-ring in it. So this is what it's supposed to look like for a TA and an AAR CUDA. It has a Trans Am tag here, and it has the data tag here. These are all the codes for it. So the D21 means it's a four-speed car, no doubt about that. The FC7, plum crazy. H6, X9 is black bucket seat interior and on and on. I could rattle on. But it's the A53 you're looking for. The, put down A53, Trans Am package. Now, this then, car is a FE5 Rally Red, H6, X9, black bucket seat interior. There's your A53. So they're both Trans Am cars. So we'll lift that off of there. This looks pretty nice too. Set it on the ground. And there's your big three two barrels. So when I look at all this stuff, this is the original kick down return spring for the kick down linkage. Original throttle spring, throttle spring bracket. So this what, probably what I don't see is the idle stop solenoid. So apparently that grew legs over the years. But you see that bolt? Mm -hmm. Those are the Highland bolts. Those are what hold those carburetors on originally. The rest of this looks very right. So that means that this has never been rebuilt? I or? don't believe that engine's ever been out of the car. It's had headers put on it. These aren't right. These aren't factory. I believe it's had headers put on for sure. But I don't think anything else has been done to it. What so why have? do we have two horns? Why do we have two horns? We have a high note and a low note horn. Okay. There's that's... only one Mopar ever left the assembly line from 1968 to 1971 that had one horn. horn. Okay. What was it? I don't know. So I'll just I'll just take a guess. Uh, one horn. Roadrunner. Sprout of my loin. Roadrunner used a purple horn. It was a single note. Meep, meep. That's what I'm talking about. 
Check my look in the mirror, mirror. Wanna change I, my wait, clothes? Wait, Dad, I got my that right. Hair, my Why are you? Face. Bruce Springsteen, 1978. I was doing crazy stuff to that song. That and the, uh, got a wife and kids in Baltimore, Jack. I went out for a ride and I never went back. Like a river that don't know where it's flowing. I couldn't think of a question turn, fast and enough. I just kept going, because everybody got a hungry heart. Ha <laughs> ha. You're a real player, Bruce. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? <sighs> so when my dad goes crazy, I don't know. I just kind of deal with it. What can you do? You can't make him stop. He's never going to change. He is who he is. If you could read my Close mind, the door. love, would it tell my keeping the door open so we can hear him tell. singing. You've just got to be like kidding me. Just Gordon Lightfoot, man. Ha <laughs> ha. What about the cars? You're a real player, Gordon Lightfoot. You want me to? <laughs> In the world of supercars, it doesn't get much better than a Hemi Cuda. In 1971, Plymouth built 59 Hemi Cuda hardtops with a four-speed transmission and 48 with an automatic transmission. These cars today are some of the most collectible and desirable cars on the planet. One of the features on a Hemi Cuda that I think is the coolest was the shaker hood. Cold air induction in 96. True or false? The cold air induction hood was standard equipment only on Hemi Kudas. If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break and we'll find out together. All right, welcome back, my friends. How did we do on the Hemi Kuda trivia? True or false, the N96 shaker hood came standard only on the Hemi Cuda model. If you guessed true, you're absolutely right. Only the Hemi Cuda models. This also applies to 1970 Hemi Cuda and 1971 Hemi Cudas. The N96 shaker hood was standard equipment on all E74 426 Hemi models. Oh, by the way, in 1971 as well, the shaker bubble was black. In 1970, it was argent silver, unless you had an FE5 Rally Red shaker hood car with a monochromatic package, and then you would have ended up with the FE5 Rally Red shaker hood. Just the bubble, not the whole hood. So we're getting close to installing the drivetrain in our 1969 Charger Daytona. This is our EV2 Hemi Orange car. The body and the paint is completely done on it, so the next thing is to put some of the brake lines in from inline tube. When that's done, we can install the drivetrain. We have the engine and transmission completely built out and detailed, so now we're down to the rear end. I have decided that I shall have Doug and Alyssa assemble the rear end. What I've always wanted to do is find out exactly how many individual components it takes to build out a rear end. So I'm gonna have Alyssa keep track of that because I have a suspicion there's several hundred parts that make up just one rear axle assembly. So all I'm asking is that you put the rear end together, you count the number of parts that go into it so we have a complete cup, so we have a complete list. <laughs> I was saying, was, hey. why don't you just count the number of parts that go on the rear okay, end? Okay, it sounds easy. I wanna I show you, I wanna show you. You see this right here? Right, little piece of rubber. That's a part. Tell yeah, me, tell one me what part. this is. One part. Thank you. What's this one? One part. Now I'm gonna take this and I'll put it around behind my back. Are you done? And I'll pull around here. Now what's this one? Two parts. God help us all. So my dad pulled me down here to help Doug count parts as he takes them off a the rear end. Um, I know that I'm the parts person, but I'm not really sure how that's gonna tie in. I know that he recently has made me the QC person now, and I'm not really sure how that's gonna tie in. This bolt, is this five parts or one part? Are we done? Okay, my old high school coach used to say, if you really don't wanna be disappointed, lower your expectations of yourself, of whoever you're dealing with. And it's words of wisdom, Lloyd, words of wisdom. He was a guidance counselor. Do you see though where okay. this is getting a little shaky already? I don't see it, but you have nothing else to do. And 
This is good. Like, what do you mean I don't have nothing else this to do? This is good information for I us guess. to have. So when Billy Bob calls up and says, hey, how come I ain't here tonight? You said you were working. Dude, there's 150,000 parts that make it up. Now that's a lie. But maybe there's two oh, or 300. Okay. This is four. And it'd be nice to be able to spell out all with <sighs> Four parts. That's four parts that make up that axle. Does that include the lug studs? You can see how this is going to no. go. No. No. That doesn't. makes nine. That makes nine times how many axles? Six. Two. Runs the two still. So now we're getting kind of somewhere. Okay. Lower lower the bar, lower your expectations. So with Doug and Alyssa, I spoon feed them. I don't really expect to have every single part counted up because there's probably a thousand. If you count every nut, every bolt, every fastener, every retainer. I'm just looking for a general idea of what we're talking about. Here's the rear axle. We'll Alyssa, and then get we'll a pen them. and paper, get a whiteboard, whatever. You can write it on the whiteboard for all I care. I don't care what, how you keep track of it. I just want you to keep track of it. Okay, I'll do both. How about that? Okay, you could do both, sure. Well, who knows, maybe I'll run out of room. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk in a fashion over toward the rear end area, <laughs> and the camera guys will change positions, thus being able to still continue to show us talking about the rear end. Okay. What sort of fashion are this we going the, to walk this in? This is the rear axle here. This my challenge is trend. the rear axle. This is the rear axle assembly, yes. Have you found somewhere for that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No. We'll go there. I need a chair. Lower your expectations. Words of wisdom, Lloyd. Words of wisdom. This is an axle housing. This is one part. The housing is one part. If I said, go get me an eight and three quarter axle housing for a 69 Dodge Charger, an empty housing, you would bring me this black housing. Is that true? The black one, yes. Okay. Yes. So you need to write down axle housing, one part. Third member or carrier. Or pumpkin? Base Or pumpkin, you can call it a pumpkin if you want to. It's one unit. Mm -hmm. So that's a part. The third member is a part. Alyssa, are you writing this down? I'm trying to keep up. Yeah, I've had two things already, so it could get overwhelming. Okay, so axle housing, and what else? Pumpkin. Dougie wants to call it a pumpkin. I don't know what he it's means. I don't know why you call it a part when it's together. Yeah, but it's one thing, right? One, it's, it's. A it's, part. Do you guys really want me to put down pumpkin? A, yeah, yeah, put down pumpkin. So one? You, you can draw a picture of a pumpkin <laughs> if that's easier for you. This is the correct sure grip lubrication instruction tab. That's another part. So Write one it down. more. The 355 gear ratio is another part. That's the axle tag ratio. I see you've already installed the inner seals in the axles. No, just one. Oh, just one, this one over here? Yeah, so I didn't that, get to this one. Okay, so he's installed one inner axle seal, so you better write that down. So do you want me to actually put the description, or can I just you do could, Oh, you could just put a little mark if that's easier for you. I'll just figure it out on my own. You could do draw pictures if that's easier, draw a cat. No, it was a serious question, because you're going to It would be nice if you wrote inner seal down, one. And then when he puts the other inner seal down, you put another mark next to it. That way you have a total, and we'd know what they are. Can I do it now? Sure. That sounds good. Go ahead and put that axle seal in there. And uh, when you do, let her know if you want to, to draw a picture of a chicken or something. You seem really happy, Dad. One. Okay, so total right seal. now, you have five, you've put five parts on the rear end before we got here, before that one. Is that correct? Five parts. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're caught up. Now what's- I could have been an attorney. But, That's what my friend but. told me. So stick, get, get out of the mechanical Ten. business. You're not gonna make any money in no. that. Be a lawyer, you're sharp, you're good on your feet, you're a good arguer, be, a, be an attorney. Nope, right. I chose to do this, so. So that's 15, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well listen, you guys got this well underway, so I'll see you later. I Hi. got work to do. Dad. I'll be back. Dad, is it right? You need to count the parts over there. He's already up to 18 parts and you've only got 15 written down. So. All right, see, there we go, Doug. Isn't it so much better when my dad's not here? I think things should get a lot smoother now, right? Yeah, we can actually work. Okay. We're getting ready to shoot this 1970 Cuda. Limelight, super cool color. 
We haven't done one in a little while like this, so kind of go around, do a few touch-ups, stuff like that, and then uh, get the car painted and get the cut and buff done and get it over to assembly. These look beautiful, look at that. Limelight, gorgeous. You guys see that? Number two painter did that right there, FJ5 Limelight. It's like little Willie getting ready to paint our 1970 CUDA 446 barrel, six speed silver sport transmission, tribute shaker hood car. Willie, how you doing, buddy? All right. Uh-huh. Getting ready to shoot the big one, huh? The big enchilada? Is this a pre-paint or final paint? It's the pre. Okay. Okay. Like Steve Prefontaine, pre, the pre-classic, preschool. I didn't get that. I did not get preschool. We did not have that back then. We had kindergarten, which you went to. I went through uh, grades one through three at Yolanda Elementary, four, five, and six at Bratton Elementary, where our principal's name was Harry Dick Peters. You can't make that up, kids. His name was Harry Dick Peters. Bratton Elementary, 1977. When I'm going around a car in the paint shop or I'm talking to Will on the level that I know he understands because we've used a lot of the same terminology. Some of it I've invented, others have been employees in the past. Got quite a few little vacations over here, buddy. When I say I see a vacation, what I'm talking about is an area where the whole quarter panel has been blocked out beautifully, right? It looks great, except that he just decided he wouldn't do below the lower style line. So it was still untouched, all right? So that's a vacation. I also can call that a, a shiny. Let's make sure, oh, hello, little shiny. Yeah. These little divots right here, you got little shiny spots. Go on, shiny, you get a little lisp when you say it. Because if you have those shiny spots and you paint over it, you know what happens. They're at the car wash, enjoying it, talking about how awesome they love the car. They hit it with the pressure washer and the paint blows off in big sheets like the 80s GM and Dodge products used to. So like a spot weld brings the panel down lower than the surface and if you don't get in there and take your finger with some scotch Bright and start scrubbing it really good and getting it dull, those are what I'm calling the thinies. All right, well thanks for having me in to give this a final QC. Oh, hello little chunky corner. <laughs> Let's fix that corner on the left rear side marker right at the front. If I'm talking about a, a chunky area or a chunky corner on a car, I'm talking about an area where the bodywork wasn't finished off very nicely. So it's the edge, it's the slag of the filler. that should have just really quickly been sanded down and been primered over the top of. But Will likes to take vacations every once in a while on these cars and not do that. So that's why I'm using those affectionate terms. All right, well, that's what I do. Will will call me in from time to time and say, hey, boss man, I need your eyes on this thing. I'm getting a little older, I don't see so good. And uh, I'll come in and give him a hand, you know? Got some uh, bare metal. We're gonna need some uh, phosphoric acid-based etch primer on. Neutralizes any bare metal that might become rust. Mm. Oh, hello, low spot. Where you been all my life? <laughs> So when I talk about a low spot, it's areas that when I walk the light across it, I can see low and or high spots that have to be circled, have to be addressed before it goes into the final paint. And in reality, they should have been addressed before it got pre-painted. Oh, you see that? This chip? Hello, little chip. What's a nice chip like you doing in a place like this? So when I'm talking about a chip or something, I'm not talking about something from a car being driven down the road that caused a chip. I'm talking about some man-made problems on these cars. So you gotta go in there with your eyes on and your head on right if you're gonna turn out the kind of paint jobs that people expect us to do. So make sure you, I don't wanna see that you feathered that back and tried to get away with it, and because I am I see it all. Some people might not be quite as meticulous when you're talking about a bright green like the FJ5, the limelight, but I think that you treat every single car like it's gonna get painted black. So you take your time and make sure every edge is right. Make sure there's no imperfections. Make sure everything on that car is prepared that if the customer at the last minute called up and said, I want a black car, as black as coffee on a moonlit night, you could paint it that way and there wouldn't be a problem in the world. No extra cleanup on aisle five. As soon as you get this stuff fixed, call me up. I'll be in my office. I gotta order a bunch of parts. I'll come out and give you a final QC. Got it? And we'll get her painted. So, as you were. So the situation with Will, when I go in there and I do my QC, I do try to have some fun with it. I'm in there to make it a lighthearted situation and not say you're stupid, you're doing this wrong. I'm just trying to point out the things. It's nice, like with Doug and Alyssa and the rest of the team now. They know how I teach, they heed those teachings, and they make a better finished product. That, to me, is one of the most satisfying feelings in the world. 
Yeah, so needless to say, I think I'm just gonna come back and spray this one when he's not here. It is Friday, it is around 12 o'clock, so I'll talk to the camera guys, talk to the audio guy, and uh, we'll paint this thing tomorrow before he even gets here. Not doing this on this car. Our 1967 Plymouth Satellite GTX tribute car belongs to Preston Smith. Now, his son works for me and has for the last 11 years. I mean, he was there when I had the inspiration. I don't know if that makes him a co-creator. He's been with me a long time with Graveyard Cars, and how I met Aaron was because of his dad. His dad had a 67 Satellite that his father bought brand new when they lived in Southern California, had it his whole life. We wanted to make it into a GTX. So back then, I was doing a car year. At the best, I was doing a car year. That was one of those cars. So we did a complete restoration transformation over to a GTX. Started life as a 318 automatic sports satellite, ended life as a tribute to a GTX 440 Super Commando automatic transmission, black on black. So when we're painting these cars, we have two choices of what kind of a finish to put on them. Do we do base coat, clear coat? or do we do single stage? We always use PPG because that's the paint that those cars were painted with at the factory. I think that's the right thing and it's a great quality product. So in this case, I'm glad that we did a base coat clear coat. And the reason being, it hasn't been exactly a pampered car. He's driven it, enjoyed it. It's sat outside it many times. It's got overspray on it. It's got shrink back in it. It's got all kinds of problems. That clear coat will buff out like glass, where the single stage may have started to lose some of its color over 14 years. It lose some of its depth. With the clear coat, I won't have that problem. After all the years of having the car, Preston came to me and asked if I would get it ready for sale for him. Uh, he's had it in the family forever, but he's not doing it justice, and he knows that. He's a diehard Mopar guy. He doesn't feel good about that. So that's why the car's here now. So when I'm buffing out a car that's 14 years old, and it's as bad as this one is, if you look at it very carefully, you'll see that there is a rainbowing finish in it, meaning that that's hard water spots that have gotten onto it. It needs to be cut really heavy. So the way that I like to do my buffing is very old school. I've got my buffer with a wool pad. A lot of people say don't go to the wool pad because you can't get rid of the swirl marks. It's too coarse, but I like a coarse pad. I like using this because I can massage it the rest of the way out with a foam pad, no problem at all. One of these little jobs right here. But for my rough cut and as bad as that paint looks right now, I want to get down to the raw paint. I have three polishes that I'm going to use, compounds and polishes. The first one I'm going to start with is called number one. That's going to be my heavy stuff. Then I'll switch over to the number two, which is a medium cut. Then a number three, I'll use both of these with a foam pad. And it should, theoretically, look like a sheet of glass when I'm done. Number one is a heavy compound. It is going to remove all of the scratches, all of the oxidation, all of the overspray. And with that wool pad, it's gonna leave a real hazy finish to it. Step two is I'm gonna go over it again with the same heavy compound, but with a foam pad. It'll begin to have some really nice luster. It won't be nearly like it should be, but the heavy gouges and the heavy swirls will be out of it. We're going to the number two. Doesn't take as much product. This stuff goes a long way. This is kind of the fun part. This is the part that'll really make the paint pop. And the longer you take, and the more you polish it, the deeper and the wetter the paint will get. So let's do it. When I'm done with it, on camera, it's going to look exactly like you think it's supposed to look when it's done. But if you were to pull it out in the sunlight, you would still have swirl marks in it. So after I do the number two, I've got to move over to the number three polish, which is the finesse polish, a fresh new foam pad, and just work it until that luster is exactly the way you want it. After that, I seal it with a hand wax and it's done. This is probably the easiest part. All we're doing is taking out some fine scratches, swirl marks, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, beautiful. 13 year old paint, folks. The kids still got it, baby.
Okay, so really that's the one, two, three of, of buffing. Back in the old days when I first started out in 1985, I was doing auto detailing. I learned how to buff, I learned how to make a car look as good as it can look, a paint job look as good as it can possibly look, and if you want results like that, it takes time and patience. But I'm very happy with the way that turned out. We're gonna be able to get this buffed out the rest of the way. I just did a test for you, but I gotta do the whole car like that. So it's gonna take me about five hours to do the entire car. But that's it, that's the, the one, two, three of how to buff Welby style. So, classroom S Azure. Seventy-one was a great year for the muscle cars, especially the Plymouth Cuda and the Dodge Challenger. A lot of really neat options were available for them. We could go through a list. If you've optioned one out, in fact, with just about everything imaginable, you would have spent, let's say, right about five thousand dollars. That would be with a Hemi. It'd be a good investment too, because the most recent seventy-one Hemi Cuda convertible sold for three and a half million dollars. So that would have been a great investment. What's standard feature did all Cudas have, regardless? of the engine and the drivetrain. Was it louvered fenders, rally instrument cluster, road lamps? If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break. Someone get the lights on, quick, please. I can't see anything. I found a switch. Oh my God. <gasps> what the? Oh no, my dad's dead. Again. How did this happen? All the suspects were in this room. Uh, yeah, I saw this in a Matlock episode once. Mark is dead, but he was not murdered. He died by his own hand. That's right, folks. The oldest trick in the book. Suicidus auto delecti. Basically, with Warman's knowledge of mechanics and physics, it would have been simple enough for him to build an apparatus that would allow him to stab himself in the back. I'd have been happy to do the same thing for a six-pack. <laughs> Basically, you know what I'm saying, a six-pack and Mopar <laughs> shifter beard. Oh, shut up, Stan. That's always your theory. I checked the hall. All the windows and doors are still barred. There's no way out of here. Okay, I've had enough of this. I'm calling 911. Hello, my simple friends. Don't bother calling the police. I've blocked the signal. If you're listening to this message, then it means I am dead. It also means when you dial 911, you triggered a detonation device that is connected to C4 plastic explosives that is set to go off in 30 seconds. I will see you all very soon. Oh no, what are we gonna do? All right, guys, how did we do on that one? This is a, this is a fun one because there's a lot, of, a lot of trivia on the 71 and speculation out there as to what is and isn't right or what is optional and what's not. My question was, regardless of the engine, what standard feature came on all CUDAs? Was it louvered fenders, rally instrument cluster, road lamps? If you guessed the road lamps code L34, you're wrong. As a matter of fact, they were standard equipment in the 70 model CUDAs, but they were optional equipment in 71. Now, if you guess that it was the Rally Instrument Cluster, you're wrong. Because the Rally Instrument Cluster was always an option on the CUDAs in 70 through 74. That would leave the louvered fenders. Whether you had a 340, 383, 446 barrel, or a 426 Hemi, remember, they didn't make the 440 four-barrel available in 71 on the E-bodies, you would have got the louvered fenders. 
standard equipment, no extra charge. Came with the territory. So. Okay, so what do you want to play next time? How about like, oh, we could try um, um, tic-tac-toe. You could just tell me where you want to put like your O and then I'm, I could put it on there for you. Aren't you supposed to jump from space to space? What are you playing? All right. Uh, no, uh, Tic-tac-toe, right. X's and O's. Hi. <laughs> what? How are you doing? Is it done? I've been working, man. I've been working. Looks good. Done. We did good. Yeah. You has got the correct U-bolts in. You got the correct nuts on the U-bolts. Don't forget your shocks. I'm sure you have. Oh, you got them out. You're ready to go. Just because this is a Daytona charger doesn't mean that the rear axle was handled differently. You might expect to see a Dana because, oh, it's a super fast NASCAR. No, no, it was just a Dodge Charger RT when it started life. So that car has an eight and three quarter with a 3.55 to one gear ratio. Putting your KEPS, K-E-P-T-S nuts on the leaf spring hangers. Very nice. Is a T on the end? Yep. KEPS I think it's K-E-P-T-S. Don't get him started with spelling. I believe. It looks good. I think if you put the shocks on it and the hangers will also need a two inch patch of the red paint because he's running this original mags and the factory, if that was a factory Magnum 500 car, you could see through the wheel, you'd see the red. The other than that, I think that looks great. We'll detail it before we put it in. Good job. With so many areas of the shop, it's been nice to watch the growth of the employees. I mean, we've really got a great team right now. And even though it takes a little bit to tune them up and get them thinking, once you do take that time, they know how important it is to me. So it's, it's relaxing for me, and it's a peace of mind for me to know that they're doing their job. And that's going to help me to be able to get the cars done faster, which is gonna make my clients happier, and to be more efficient across the board and the fact that I don't have to sit in there and do it. So that's a winner all the way around. What did okay. we end up with on the total number of parts? 375. 375? Yeah. Let me see. There's two there. Well, Dad, it's out of the freaking page. What is this? What is what? I didn't put them all down on that. Well, what, you didn't put them all down on it. Well, no, because Well, there's I, about 25 parts there. Well, I started there's out and then I changed, just... I changed the way I was doing it because I just feel like that was going to take forever and that sucked. So I just put them as marks like on the whiteboard, you know? Like, you know, know when people are in prison and the they just do, it was right like, like, that's how it felt. I felt like I was in prison and I was going day by day. Putting, yeah. Where is it? It's upstairs. Why would it be upstairs? I need the numbers. Well, I didn't know you're supposed to write down. down. What is axle housing? Is that like it's axle, the axle Foley housing. from Beverly look, Hills Cop? Look, I don't have Merriam-Webster dictionary as my like. No, but you graduated. Yeah. Remember that? It was a long time ago. Remember you walked down the aisle, you threw your Do hat you know in what the I air. Mean? Do you know? You know what I meant though? When you read it, see, that's all that matters. What does it matter? It doesn't. Pumpkin, sure crib, it's just, of course, it just. It's upstairs. Yes, it's upstairs. It doesn't matter. So I told if I go you upstairs, it. Okay. Right. Good news is the axle looks good, everybody. Wide shot right there, that camera guy on wide shot, give him a thumbs up so everybody knows Mark's okay with it. So it looks good. Thank nice you. Nice work, very, very nice. Pretty That's, good, that was, that was good. It's getting better all the time. Yep. That's the whiteboard right there. No. That's it. No, it's not. Why is it down here? Why'd you lie because to me? Because I told you the number. Oh God.